Hi there, my name's Michelle. I'm gonna to talk to you, hopefully not trip. I'm gonna to talk to you about beautiful data. Um, inspiration. So my title is Chief Data Scientist and I work at the analytics platform company, Keen.io. And I got that title because I've spent the past few years working with hundreds of customers on what's important to their business, what data they should collect, how they should model it. So I've seen lots and lots and lots of data models, and today I wanted to share with you a couple useful tips and tricks that I've used um, to help make those customers successful. I've also built out a team of data engineers that help our customers, so I love hearing everyone's stories about how to build teams. Uh, this is just a great event. Thanks, Karen. Uh, so first I wanted to share a story about one of our customers, Al Jazeera. Uh, and actually, before I dig into this story, I wanted to say that I think the most beautiful data is the data that helps us achieve our vision. It's useful. Um, and Al, Al Jazeera's vision was to, like any news company, they're one of the biggest news companies in the world, was to get their content to more people, to tell stories. Um, so one of the ways they were trying to do that was they launched a new Apple TV app um, to deliver video documentaries uh, in this format. And it's a really great app, highly recommend it. Uh, but they were a little disappointed because the engagement with their, with their video documentaries was a little low. So they were getting great and great engagement with these like breaking news and stuff, but um, they're really their very best and most strategic content, their award-winning documentaries, not so much. Um, but I wouldn't be telling this story if there wasn't a happy ending. They were able to more than double their engagement with their best content. Um, and the data model they used to do that is really simple. So I wanted to show you data model. Um, they were simply tracking what videos were played. So uh, this is pretty obvious. You're a content delivery app, you want to track when content is delivered, who's playing stuff and what are they watching. So they have the obvious things like when a video was played, what its title was, who played it, on what device, etc. Uh, the clever thing that they did was they included the method by which that video was played. And this seems really obvious now that you see it in here, but in fact, people usually don't model data in this way. They'll, they'll have something like um, every time someone looked at a playlist or the path that people got and they'll track every little thing. Uh, this is actually really, really valuable to put them the way that someone got to this event on the event itself. So they have things like one play method might be you selected the video from the main menu, another one might be that you played it as a part of a playlist. Um, and like in this example, this event maybe was in position two of a playlist. So the end result is if they're really trying to increase engagement with their best content, um, they wanted to figure out what can we do, change in our product to do that. And the change they made was actually really trivial. They just moved the documentaries to be the very first row of content that you saw when you opened the app. Super obvious. The thing that was surprising to them was even though they were able to like increase the view of documentary plays, doing that shift actually didn't impact the other types of content too. All of them had great engagement with this change. Um, so huge win for them. Uh, but I think even more importantly was using some of that context data, they were able to learn something really new about the way people use content on Apple TV. So they had this assumption that the great thing about this format is you can select what content you want to view but a large number of people just were opening the app and pressing play. So they actually wanted people to select the content for them. So this, this finding was like something that has changed the way they think about their product overall. Um, and that's super valuable for them. So again, they're just tracking one simple event, video plays, and they're able to get these great insights. There's all kinds of stuff they can do with that data. Maybe we want to find out how the ranking or the position in a playlist affects how often something gets played. There's like an unlimited amount of things they could potentially dig into with even that really simple data model. So the reason I like this example is because this theme comes up a lot when I'm working with customers. Um, I'm always trying to get them to focus on what are the really key engagements that are important for your business and how can we make sure we really nail those and understand what's, what's important about those. Um, so I try to tell people focus on the most important events. Uh, include rich context about the, anything you know about the user, the app, how they got there. Uh, just put it right there on the event itself because like someone before me said like making your data easy to query is huge, hugely beneficial. Um, and this is one way you can do that. Uh, so I have a couple more examples. Uh, payment events are a really important engagement for many, many businesses. So we want to track when people pay us. 
uh, and we want to track how much they pay us and when and who they are. Uh, but what if you included something like, uh, for the person that paid, what was the month they signed up for their cohort? Or what if you included how they first found your site? There's so much stuff you know about this user that you could potentially record, record right there on the event. Um, and even something really simple like sign up month, you include that and then suddenly just using your payment events you can see like over time what's our revenue by cohort in one simple query or like what's our engagement by each cohort. Here's another example I have from working with a jukebox company. They make internet connected jukeboxes and there are tens of thousands of them all around the country. Um, for their product manager, he was really trying to figure out, like, how do I, the jukebox is collecting money all the time, how, but how can I really increase the amount of money that people are doing each session? So sessions were a really important concept for him. Um, and of course, we wanted to track, you know, when sessions are happening and who's doing them and where they are. But uh, one of the clever things that they figured out was, like, what if we put some summary data in the session, like how many plays happened during that session, how much money was spent, what was the duration of that session? Uh, of course, we were also tracking when songs were played, what, when money was spent in separate events, but by putting it all on the one session event, now suddenly it's like super trivial to just like, count how many sessions we've had where the person spent over $10, or um, find the jukeboxes which had the highest value sessions. sessions. Uh, so thinking about your data model ahead of time, thinking about the most important events and what context might be useful is super, super powerful. Uh, I love talking about this stuff. I love talking about data, so if you want to talk to me about your data, uh, happy.